everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca, if we have never met before, and if we have met before, welcome back. Around here, we talk about houseplants. <laughs> oh god, what was that? <laughs> um, I'm really excited to share this video with you today because it is the first premiere episode of my new series, Let's Edit. I've, I'm still coming up with a cool name, bear with me. Maybe I will have come up with something better by now. In any case, Welcome to the new series. In this series, I'm going to be looking at older videos of mine that have been popping up more recently or feel more relevant as of lately and do some editing and figure out where I went wrong or things that I could have explained better because what I'm noticing, especially with the video I'm talking about today, which will be all about root rot, which is very exciting, not exciting at all, but a lot of people have been asking me for tips and tricks when you experience root rot. And I've been directing people to this video but I did watch it after I directed somebody once and realized that there's just so much that I could have said so much better or differently or explained better. So since this video was made pretty early in my YouTube journey, April 2019, I think, I wasn't really explaining what was going on. I was really just sharing my experience. And when there is something that I'm going through as a plant person, I do like to make videos like this, just sharing my experience. And then maybe I knew somewhere along the line I would go back and teach about it because I think it's really important that you know how to take care of a situation before you try to teach about it. I mean, doesn't that just make sense? So I have made the mistake the grand mistake that I swore to myself I would never make. And for a long time, I was actually in denial that I did this. Oh, dear. <laughs> I overwatered my pothos. You see that nastiness? This mold happened because the soil stayed too wet for too long. The plant could also have root rot. I haven't lifted the hood just yet. So the first thing that I want to address in the video is I didn't exactly tell you what causes root rot, or I didn't explain well enough, in my opinion now, almost a year later. So the actual cause of root rot is soil staying too wet for too long. And I do remember that I said that, but what does that actually mean and how do you do that? Okay, so how do you give your plant root rot? So I did use the buzzword overwatering, and at the time, I had a different understanding of what overwatering meant. Overwatering kind of brings in this idea that you are watering your plant too much. Too much could mean too much water at once or too often. So the word much in the English language is very confusing and I feel this way and I'm like diving deeper into this because I have a linguistics minor so I'm just a little bit more interested in those kinds of things. But for the average person, much, it could mean a lot of different things and it can be interpreted many different ways. So I'm here to tell you that much in too much water means that you are watering the plant too often. And that has nothing to do with the amount of water that you give the plant at one time. Oftentimes I see people watering their plants just a little bit of water more often. I will say, so there are no hard and fast rules in houseplant owning, but for some plants that does work, but for a lot of plants, hmm they could probably stand to get a lot of water less often. Basically what I'm trying to say here is when I water my plants, I absolutely saturate them all the way down to the bottom of the pot. So the pots are very heavy when I go to put them back, but I know that every single inch of that soil is absolutely saturated in water. And that is okay because I know that the soil is going to dry out in a timely manner because I have given it the correct amount of soil to other things ratio. And when I say other things, I'm just saying soil additives like orchid bark, pumice, perlite, cocoa choir, all of these different things which we will talk about a little bit later. There is no way to overwater your plant by giving it too much water at one time. So I just want that to be abundantly clear. I know that I talked about this as well in my Houseplant 101 video. The next thing that I want to address is signs that your plant has root rot. So this plant is the quintessential root rotted plant, okay? So we've got the yellow leaves, we've got the droopy plant, and we've got the mold on the top soil, and God knows where else it was. So that is, by definition, a root rotted plant, all right? So just by looking at it, you can see that it was in danger, and I am just shocked that I let it get as bad as it did, because I do remember I waited like a few days after I noticed that the plant was acting like that to see if it would change, which I guess I wouldn't go back on that now because 
I mean, we don't want to be digging into our plants the second we realize something might be wrong. Sometimes it is good to just kind of like let the plant sit for a second. But in this case, now that I know that that was root rot, I mean, that was my first time experiencing root rot. So now moving forward, if I ever see that again, I'm gonna break open the pot. Please don't get down on yourself if you have lost a plant to root rot, if you have lost a plant to underwatering, if you have lost a plant to sunburn, mealybugs, whatever it may be, because there's a first time for all of these experiences, and I'm sure that not many of us have been collecting for 20 plus years. I know that there are a few of you out there, which hats off to you, but a lot of us don't have that experience, so it is okay to accidentally kill a plant because of something like this, and not really know what to do. And the hope in all of this is that we would take that experience and learn and apply it in the future. So that is what I have done so far. I haven't really had issues with root rot since then, but let's get back into the video now. Got the plant down here. I'm going to just de-root it. I'm just gonna take it out of its pot and check out what's going on. And you know, I'm gonna first scoop out all the moldy soil cause gross. I did not at all need to remove the top layer of moldy soil if I was going to unroot the plant anyway. I don't know why I did that, but looking back, that's one of those things that like, it just doesn't make any sense. But I did want to say, if you do see mold on top of your soil, but the plant is showing no signs of being in distress, there is no signs of, you know, yellowing leaves, droopy leaves, nothing like that. The plant is business as usual, except there is mold on the top soil. You definitely should be paying attention because that could potentially mean that you are susceptible to root rot in the future. However, again, if all things are normal and maybe you're just having a bit of a, you know, dark, moist couple of weeks and so mold is kind of creeping in. I know that that has happened to me this winter a few times, especially in my bathroom where I keep it just a little bit more humid. I have been experiencing just a little bit of mold here and there. And so what I have done in those situations is I will grab some regular old ground cinnamon and I will sprinkle it on top of the soil around my plant. And the very thing that gives cinnamon its flavor and scent called cinnamaldehyde, that's a big word, that actually acts as a natural fungicide to fight against mold. I have found a lot of success in doing that in small cases of mold in my home. Now I'm going to completely remove all of the soil from the roots. If I was to just remove the top layer of soil that was moldy, that means that there are still mold spores living in the plant and could be reactivated at any moment. So if you are wanting to eliminate any chances of mold coming back, you definitely could remove all of the soil. Well, you should remove all of the soil from the plant. And also you don't necessarily have to throw it away. You could bake the soil and I will put instructions for that on the screen. And that will basically take out any living thing that is in your soil. You can do this with fungus gnats, you can do this with mold, and that should take out, just completely wipe out anything that is living in the soil so that you don't have to run into this again. If you are on a, like a soil shortage or you just don't wanna go buy more, you don't wanna waste the soil, you definitely can sanitize it and reuse it. Okay, so those roots are rotted because they are brown and mushy. They were also kind of stinky. Okay, so there have been a lot of plants in my experience that I was suspicious that they had root rot because the roots were just a little bit darker, namely the Sansevieria family. The roots on Sansevierias can sometimes be like a red color, and in my experience, if a root wasn't like completely white, it was a bad root. So I was just very confused like very early on in my plant journey about that. So just know that it isn't rotted unless the root is like squishy. So if the root is just a dark color, in my experience, maybe it is like stained. I don't know if roots can actually get stained, but I have experienced healthy roots that are a darker color and there's nothing wrong with them at all. Also, sometimes aerial nodes and roots will kind of come out like a dark brown color. That's normal as well and not rotted. Again, the rot only is when it is like squishy. You can pull off like an outer layer of the root and the inner layer is like, it just is like a tiny little string. It's very strange. I have saved these pieces. The root system that we've got left is all right. It's not that great, but um, it'll definitely do. Pothos are really easy to root again in soil or in water. And so I'll show you what we've got, what we're working with. We got some roots. We at least have some pretty thick looking nodes. So what I did in this situation, and we will see later on, I potted it directly back into soil which I now know was actually a very big mistake. The root system was definitely not big enough to sustain the amount of foliage that there was. 
and the plant, you know, as time went on in the new pot, it just kind of deflated again. Definitely depending on your root system, like you're, you probably want to have a super substantial root system even still after you've removed all of the dead, old, rotted roots before you put it back in soil. So what you can do as far as care, after care with a root rotted plant is you can put it in moss, you can put it in water and that will just allow the plant to regrow its root system in a safe place. So oftentimes, I don't know what it is about Thai constellation, but I've seen so many cases of the Thai constellation getting root rot. And with that plant being as special as it is, it's really, really hard to come to terms with and you want to do everything you can to save it. But oftentimes all you can really do is just remove all of the rot and just wait for it to grow more roots. And with monsteras being as tough as they are, you can definitely be optimistic that it will grow back roots, especially pothos too. I mean, this plant definitely grew back its roots, but it was not in soil. Optimal drainage, it's so important. So I picked up some orchid bark. It looks a little bit like this if you haven't seen it before. Okay, something that I want to change about this part is I would definitely suggest using a more coarse mix of orchid bark. The one that I just showed is rather thin and that will just decompose a lot faster or decompose, break down a lot faster into the soil. With the bigger pieces, it'll just take longer and also just the chunkier pieces will create more of a place for roots to latch onto or just for the water to fall through the empty spaces. Okay, so I would venture to say that that pot was even still too big for the plant. I think that oftentimes when we buy plants, we're thinking of how big the plant is on top. And so we want to buy it a bigger pot because it feels like the plant is so big. And honestly, we should be repotting plants for the size of the root system. And so with that being said, I never repot a plant that is more than two inches bigger than the root system itself. So if that means that I have a sort of top heavy plant, I'm willing to take that risk because I just don't want to have the plant in too big of a pot. Because if the soil versus roots ratio is like offset, you will have issues. So if you have too much soil and not enough roots, there is that much more moisture staying in that pot because there's just more soil. And if you have too many roots and not enough soil, the water is just going to fall through really, really fast and dry out a lot faster. So if you are having an experience where your plant is drying out a lot faster than usual, you might want to repot your plant or at least check out the roots and see how they're growing because it might be time to upgrade that pot. So in light of all of this, I wanted to share with you what the plant looks like today because it has been on quite the journey from the pot in my classroom, from root rot and mold to this smaller pot to now living in water full time. So this plant actually did not do very well in the new pot that I gave it so long ago because the root system was just not big enough to sustain the plant. And so what happened was I lost even more leaves. It was just becoming a lot of trouble. And so I do know that pothos really enjoy and can live in water full time. So that is just what I decided to do with this plant. And actually when plants are in water full time, you can put them in a lot of different places in your home and they will still be perfectly happy. This plant actually, well it lives in water, but it lives on my TV stand in my living room and it receives like virtually no light and it is still very, very happy and is putting out a new leaf, actually, surprisingly enough, that is still like very, very white. So this was a marble queen, if you didn't pick up on that from the video previously, and some of it is a golden pothos. I would consider this a success story, despite the fact that it is not in soil. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. And could I have put this back in soil after it regrew its roots? Absolutely. Will I someday? Maybe, but I kind of just like the idea of having it in water full time and just having a low maintenance plant that I don't really have to worry about besides giving it a little bit of liquid fertilizer and changing out the water every few weeks. Just in case I get questions about the liquid fertilizer thing, I don't really measure. I just kind of like put a very small drop in it because what I use is a concentrate so it doesn't need a ton of it. So just to keep it with its nutrients, I will do that because there's no actual nutrients in water. So if you do want a plant to live in water full time, that's all you need to do and it should be totally fine. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this new episode of my series, Let's Edit, 
mm, I don't know if that's the actual name, but in any case, I hope that you enjoyed it and you learned something new today and I'm glad to have a new video to show people when they ask me about root rot. If this video was helpful, definitely make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. I would love to have you around here more often for more plant fun and more plant education and just plenty hangs, you know what I mean? That's what we do around here. So thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye guys. And the very thing that gives cinnamon its smell and flavor, cinnamon, cinnamon maldehyde, cinnamon maldehyde, cinnamon maldehyde. Okay. And the very thing that gives cinnamon its flavor, cinnamon maldehyde. And the very thing that gives cinnamon its flavor and scent, cinnamaldehyde, cinnamaldehyde. That's a big word.